Welcome everyone and today I want to show you new patient I have. Nintendo Entertainment System. This one is Mattel version. This system works fine. My friend asked me to install Etim's RGB mode. Problem with Nintendo systems as you most probably know is the inferior video outputs. As you can see this one has this RF signal, channel switcher, power supply and also it has RCA classic video output that's uh, composite. I have been installing it in original Famicom and also in my own uh, Sharp Twin Famicom. I have never held in my hand original Nintendo Entertainment System and what I see about this particular gaming system, I really hate the fact it's really sticky and dirty. I know the guy who owns it, of course, he's my friend and I understand why this happens. He's not the sort of guy that would go around his room and clean every day. Also, he does not have any females at home and nobody cleans any, anything. As a first thing, I'm gonna disassemble it and get it to washing room to clean it. As you know, it's a tradition for me use awesome towels on which to operate the patient, but I do not want to get them dirty. Okay, that's the drawer itself and I see the few of the legs are really bent and ugly. Unlike your conscience, you clean your consoles just with hot water and soap. If it's not super dirty, I suggest to use just soap and no special ingredients or additives to it. And now to wash away all the filth, I'm gonna use Schlang of Purging. Demons be gone! Oh. Demons and fallen angels of dirtiness has been eradicated. I will use the power of sun and maybe the grill of winter hotness. Oh no, the grill of winter hotness is cold. Now what I need to do is to get to the motherboard itself. Really tiny board. And I know for sure that this crap also disconnects. Can you see the pins? Notice, every second is damaged and I have no means to fix it. I do not have this spare part. Also, if you know the oxidation on the lower part, I really believe it's not an original part, it's already a replacement. If the guy says it works, I believe it works. So now with the board in my hand, I am going to hit the manuals. So first thing I have to do is to remove the picture processing unit or PPU, which is this one, this I see. I'll be using my trusty desoldering station. I believe it's gonna be quite loud, but there's no other way around it. Now what I'm going to do is twiggle each pin a little and note which are still binding. You do not have to add your solder, just add flux and this flux will it melt it reaches the bottom of the board and and everything the solder is super easy it's so convenient excellent the soldering this chip took me about an hour and the reason is these three pins these are soldered into wires that leads to the grounding this uh, big lighter green area and the problem is it adds such a huge thermal mass that my desoldering station was unable to heat up the solder enough on uh, this side Afterwards, I tried to use my small soldering iron, but this green trace is cooling the soldering so much that I had to resort to my 60 watt uh, soldering iron I used to solder wires in the walls and el electric connections in the flat. The brownish color here you see, it's not the burn traces, it's just the uh, flux I used that got burnt. The big time is now, and as you can see, at least I hope, I can remove the PPU. I was super careful, so I think it should not be dead, but we'll see it in the future. Anyways, now I'll clean up the board and uh, clean up all the wires so I can insert the socket for the RGB mod. So the next thing I have to do is to install the socket like this. Actually, what I don't like is that Tim Warrington from Etim's boards since recent revisions, he has changed the principles how board works. Previously, you had the second socket 
on the parasitic board and you was able to install the second socket on it and then install the uh, PPU on it so at the end of the day you was able to remove the board completely and reinstall the original PPU so it would became total stock configuration right now it's impossible because currently he has decided you should uh, solder the PPU on this board but it's his own decision maybe it just depends on the configuration maybe it's just for these original NES uh, consoles I don't know I'm not too sure anyway let's solder the socket in didn't took so long clean neat I like it and now while removing PPU is the most difficult part and most complicated uh, there's also one more issue one would think it's very simple you take this uh, PCB little it's a mod itself and as you can see here is the text 5 volt for PPU it clearly shows that small pins are for these small connection thingies and the big holes are for PPU itself and it's only logical and reasonable that you understand if it's 5 volts for PPU and PPU goes in like this and then these little legs pins array of pins goes underside now the reason why I'm showing you this and making big deal out of it you see if first you install the PPU and solder in here then see the small pins goes in this side you're not able to solder them from this side because there's already PPU covering the pins order in which you solder is very important also these tiny pins extends too much I must admit and that's a bit of design flaw as you can see if I push the little pins to the end the processor PPU lifts up and here you can see I have installed this one inner array of uh, pins so next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna install the PPU which goes in like this now as you can see I have left me a comfortable place to solder in one side of PPU and the other side how I install the second array of uh, pins it would be much more difficult for me to solder this side of PPU that's the reason I mentioned that the order is very important next thing we are going to address is a voltage regulator you see this original voltage regulator here you can see this with three little pins is designed to convert voltage from incoming uh, around 12 volts to uh, 5 volts that is necessary for this board to work but the thing is that uh, this additional board draws more electricity and then when you use some ever drives it draws even more and in result this original voltage regulator gets really hot and heat would not be an issue uh, if not for the super tiny radiator so how Tim addresses it he provides a little board with the external voltage regulator which is designed to keep up with the more demanding hardware I have never installed any of these before because previously I've done only modification for original Famicom and Sharp Twin Famicom and those are equipped with the huge heat dispensers actually when I will be putting everything together in the housing I will cut the wires to the exact length and resolder them and the next thing is by far the most complicated Etim, Tim Warrington he assumes that uh, this is a RGB board that you are going to install two separate connectors actually three of them video connector that's uh, 8 pin mini DIN then S video connector and then 3.5 jack for the audio separate audio these are the connectors he provides with additional boards to install in your setup the problem with this mod is first you need this separate cable and second is you will have to do much of the drilling in the console itself now what I'm going to try is to install Super Nintendo's multi AV port into original Nintendo Entertainment System where the hell I'm going to get the multi-EV port from Super Nintendo of course I have a dead ravaged board 
it even states here dead since i need to install it in the new system i want it with this whole part of the board And the deed is done. Look what I got now. An original Super Nintendo Multi AV port. How I know which pin goes where? I found schematic of the Multi AV port pinout diagram. So next thing I need to connect all these wires to the RGB mod board. And it's done. So next thing I'm going to do is to check whether it all works. Three days has passed since I stopped dealing with this project and here is why. You see this whole setup, that's uh, in theory it's uh, everything is working, it's just boards are not installed in the system itself, but it doesn't matter. Now watch this, obviously system is working fine, as you can see it's RGB since the sharpness and everything. But if you have ever seen the menu of EverDrive, the colors are wrong. Okay guys, here's what's happening. By seeing this picture, it was obvious I was missing green color. And what would any normal person do? They would uh, check the, the wiring and check everything, where the signal is missing and where it's going. But that would be a normal person. What Toto Kretin does first, he decides that he has burned PPU, so I ordered two clone PPUs in case I somehow magically can use those. But actually I don't regret that because I found out that uh, there is a Chinese alternative to these PPUs and, and actually they are pretty compatible, so I will have use for them in, uh, when fixing other clone systems. Next thing I addressed to solve this issue with missing green color is of course modifying the cables. But that was not the right direction, of course. Then I played with synchronizing lines, Luma Sync, C Sync, but without any luck, no, nothing. I didn't succeed in any way. So then, of course, what I did was I searched all the answers in the internet. And of course, there are guys who have installed this. This actually is very popular board. Very, very many people have installed it successfully and very many people has installed it unsuccessfully and broke something and weird shit happening with these boards since it's a semi-complicated modification there are people who had issues with these boards so first what i found out is that of course i knew that the board was bad the green signal was missing nothing happens if i attach green line green cable going to my video cables to this board or not no changes in picture, so of course my conclusion, the board is dead. What I did was complain to all my friends. Then after a few beers, I decided to turn to my good friend Mike from America. Since he has very many friends in electronic video gaming system related uh, area, he brought up all the forums and asked around what the, could be the culprit and what's the issue and how come and etc etc probably he might have guessed but he didn't know that sometimes my cretinism escalates to the level unimaginable and this is exactly that case next thing i did i personally contacted via email tim warrington the maker of this board designer and seller and everything i have to mention i found a forum that uh, told that some people are missing color signals because of dying capacitors. It turns out these capacitors actually were there on the board in previous revisions. Now there's no capacitors directly on the color lines, so they cannot go wrong, it's just a decoder and that's all. And in response to my stupid email, Tim also mentioned that uh, actually I should measure the resistance of the green line. And also he mentioned Try the soldering green and red wires and switch them in places. You can de deattach any other color, in this particular case it was red, and connect it to the green line. And as you might have guessed, of course colors did change. Meaning there is a green signal in the board and it's coming out. This is my multimeter. If I connect these sticks, it beeps if it's shorted. And if I connect one of these pokes to the ground, another one to the red pin, 
nothing happens. Of course, it's correct, they should not be grounded. If it's grounded, it means it's short somewhere. Now, if I connect the pin to the ground and to the green channel, so now I know the green signal is shorted. But let me show you this. I disconnect the green wire and now check for short. No short to the green. Meaning there is no problem with the RGB board. So next logical thought, there is a problem with the cable. But as you see, there is no cable attached. And it leaves only with one thought. What exactly I know about this board? And have I tested it anyway? So check this out. That's the ground area. And that's the green pin. And how did I expect there to be a green color? I feel like such an idiot right now. Now, as you can see here, all I did was scratch all around this pin to make sure nothing shorts with any other pin or the board itself. I am super happy that's sorted out and now I'm totally sure everything works fine. No bars, no, no issues, no anything. Works fine with my OSCC and works fine without it. So all I have to do now is to plan how to install everything in the system itself. Only place I was able to find location for this connector is here. It will be somewhere around here. I am unable to install it here because of this box is too thick. Now I have to find some ideas how to make the hole as smooth as possible. What I will do, I will drill a hole and then Adjust it with files. <laughs> so, as you can see, I barely made a dent. Literally, but uh, whole make I did. Now let's try to install my connector. Oh, and also notice this. There was a hole already. So you can open this and here you have your pallet swap. I didn't even have to drill anything. The hole was already there. Super nice. Here you can see the installation. The holes are there. In my opinion, pretty nice. I'm quite happy with the result. To deal with the horrible mess I made with the cabling, what I did was I shortened them all and twisted in a series according to their meaning. Like uh, these two are the power supply, these three are for pallet switch, this is RGB and synchronization channel, this is ground and voltage and this one is separate because it's audio. If someone asks why I did not cut them as short as possible, the answer is simple. I want this front loader nest to be disassembled as easy as possible, that the next person who gets in there doesn't have to disorder first to disassemble the console. And this is how assembled unit looks. This is where I install the voltage regulator. So guys, that's pretty much it. I'm really pleased with the end results. The picture is simply great. Amazing. I love it. Also, the guy asked me to fix his controllers, but uh, since all they required was proper cleaning and with some rubbing alcohol and uh, just washing the innards out, I decided not to show this to you. Uh, also, what's my opinion about this all RGB thing? This is my third RGB mod, and, and I must admit that it's most difficult to modify this uh, original front loader Nintendo Entertainment System. Uh, because setup is quite different and uh, it's more complicated. I really hope that the guy who asked me to mod his console, he will notice the pallet switch under the console and also he will notice how clean and awesome all the controllers are. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.